Father God, we come before you, God. We thank you for carrying us from January to December 31st. We've lost some loved ones. We had some trials and tribulations. We had some struggles. We had some good times. We laughed, we cried, but we give you all glory and honor because it was designed for the purpose for our lives, God. Our prayer tonight is, God, as you carry us over, God, that we'll give you our best, God. Hallelujah. We thank you for the rebuke. We thank you for the recharge. We thank you for the renew. We thank you for the restart, God. We bless you in this house on tonight. We pray, God, to give you all honor and glory, God. Everywhere that our feet tread, God, we thank you for being a holy ground, God, every seed that we have sown, God, for your glory. We thank you, God, for it coming back a hundredfold, God. We bless you for this great woman of God in this household tonight that has poured out our soul to your people that they may grow, that they may elevate, that their minds might be renewed in Christ Jesus. God, we bless you all tonight. And we give you all honor and glory. God, have your way in this place. We thank you. We honor you. We're going to glorify you tonight. We're going to lift you up. We're going to praise you from the, with the fruit of our lips, from the seed of our womb. We lift you up. We bless you. We honor you. We bless you that every heart and mind be changed in this place on tonight that they need never the same God. Love you and we honor you. God, have your way in Christ's name. Amen, amen, amen. Come on and bless him in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm standing in for Deacon Cersei tonight. So I will be your MC. And we gonna praise him. We gonna praise him every time you see me. You can go ahead and give God a praise. Next, we're going to have up Brother Frank Prather, and then we're going to follow up with the occasion by Sister Antavia Blunt, and then we will have the praise team. Amen? Amen. Come on and praise him. Don't let your praise hit the ground. Come on and praise him. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I would like for everybody to just stand to your feet. Y'all stand to your feet. And I want somebody to just take somebody by the hand tonight. Come on, take somebody by the hand and look at them and say, I don't know about you, but this year have been hell. But I'm going to press my way and I'm going to praise my way to the next year. Come on, come on, let's give us a praise. I want to tell you all, you are welcome, welcome, welcome. We done did it, y'all. We here. We're here. We're here. This is the occasion. Tonight we have come together to celebrate the conclusion of 2023. It was a time full of laughter, tears, learning, and so much more. The only difference is us, who we are, and how we have changed. How our experiences have shaped and how we know the knowledge and how we have grown. Tonight. Allow yourself the opportunity to gain a new understanding on the events that have taken place in your life, yes. the battles yes. that take place in our mind. Yes. There are six words we wanted to highlight tonight to remind you it's not too late and the opportunity is yours to return to the source. Yes. Realign yes. to align again. Yes. Refocus, yes. adjust your focus or focus again. Yes. Reset. Set again or start over. Yeah. Rebrand. Brand again or change the image of. Yeah. Most importantly, rebooting. Yeah. 
to start something again or to do something again in a way that is new yes. and interesting. Yes. A restart is the action that initiates the reboot of the operating system. Yes. One thing you notice about the words is the re, right. the prefix. Yeah. Yeah. Re means yeah. back again or again, or in some cases to the original place. Right. Yeah. If you don't remember anything from the night, remember it is never too late to return to the source. Yeah. So throughout this year, check your connection with God. If there's something that interrupts it, refocus, yeah. realign yourself. Yeah. If you feel distant from God, restart and reset. Yeah. Lastly, when you feel like you've lost yourself, find yourself again in God and rebrand your soul. Yeah. Be identified from the inside out. Yeah. So again, we done made it, we're here, let's do this thing, y'all. <laughs>
Thank you. 
worshiping, don't stop worshiping, hallelujah. Build a home in my worship, hallelujah. We will have a Boafle, Sister Juanita and Sister Cersei are going to come up and then we will have a dance by Sister Wendy Wynn and Layla Cheney. All right. And then we're going to have the speakers, Evangelist Kathy Thornton, Minister Caldine Lampkin, and Minister Rhonda Wilson. All right, y'all ready for some door prizes? Yes. Let me ask it again. Y'all ready for some door prizes? Yes. All right, get your tickets out. Everybody got a ticket? <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> All right, Miss Angela, you gonna pick it and... What's the last three numbers? Four, four, three. Oh. You got it? Come on up. Come on. Four, four, three. We got a winner. Put your hands together for Michael. Michael, get your gifts. to tonight. Watch him turn it for your good. He's not done with what he started. Cause he's not done until it's good. So hello, 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 strength. Hello, hope. It's a new horizon. Hello, peace. Hello, joy. Hello, love. Hello, strength. Hello, hope. It's a new horizon.
Thank you. I'm going to start over. As we bring in the new year with new dreams, optimism, goals for better relationships, better health, and deeper spirituality, please know that with it will also come thoughts of discouragement, negativity, and challenges. The news, social media, and most of all echoes in our own mind will tell us that the new year will be like the old year. And if we give in to those thoughts, it will be. But it is important, it is vital to know that not only yearly, but daily, and even throughout the day, we can reset. So what is reset and how do we reset? Reset means to get something to its original setting by deleting information. We reset by casting down imaginations and high things that continually exalt itself against the knowledge of God. That means thoughts that try to get us to think and act in a way that does not line up with the plan of God for our life. If we don't know the plan, that means we have some resetting to do. We have some deleting to do. So where do we start? One way to start is through the preach word. The voice that comes up when the preacher is talking, when the preacher is saying things like, God loves you, or God has a plan for you, or it's never too late, that you haven't messed up enough, that you haven't done things enough that God has forgotten about you, that voice, that voice that begins to say, oh, she's not talking about you. He's not talking about you. You're a failure. You'll never amount to anything. That voice that begins to speak those things, that voice needs to be cast down. That way of seeing yourself needs to be cast down. That voice inside that's arguing with the preached word needs to be obliterated, demolished, destroyed until you no longer see yourself that way. And it is replaced by the original. What needs to be cast down, it needs to be cast down. And as we begin to take the preached word into our heart, it obliterates the images and negative thoughts. And a lot of times we believe, well, I don't need to come to church. I can just read the Bible. But if you don't have the right understanding of the Bible, then you don't really understand the Bible can be a dangerous thing if you don't understand it. it the, the word says in Ephesians 6 that it is a sword. And if you're not mature enough or strong enough to deal with a sword, you can cut yourself in a way that will kill you. So when you begin to come to church and the preacher, someone who has been... Um, learn in the knowledge of the Bible begins to speak, and then that word begins to um, provoke your heart, and then those old echoes begin to speak and say that she's not talking about you or he's not talking about you, then you can begin to, un you can understand and you can begin to fight against those words. Yeah. But you will never recognize that those words are what's killing you if you don't hear the opposite, which is the preached word. Yeah. So as we begin to come, and we begin to listen, we're able to understand. And another thing, meditation. Meditation helps us to become aware of our thoughts. Research says that we think approximately 60,000 um, thoughts a day, and approximately 80% of them are negative. That's the way we're wired. That means most of them go unchecked. But when we become aware of what we're thinking, we then have the power to stop the thought with the truth and then to act upon the truth that we now know. Tonight is a great time to reset. Let's continue to delete old information in each part of our life as we constantly grow as well as grow up. Amen. Amen, amen. Good evening. Yes. My word is refocus. Philippians 1 and 6, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. This verse is encouraging the believers. He's encouraging to let you know the process that is taking place within is the good works. It will no, it will no doubt be, be completed 
if you continue to do the work, if you continue to do the things necessary to lead you to the God consciousness that is within, that is you, it will be completed. It will lead you to become aware and discover who God is within you and who you truly are. One way to do this is to refocus. Refocus means to adjust the focus of or to focus on something new or different. When you are refocusing, it's not just because you have allowed something or someone to distract you. Because what I've learned is most of the times your distractions are lessons. But because your thoughts were out of focus, you perceived it the wrong way. We have to refocus our thoughts because as we've learned, everything begins with our mind. Our thoughts shape our world. They shape how we perceive things. The Bible tells us in Philippians 4 and 8 to think on things that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, and good. We use these keys. We use the keys that we have to help us to refocus our thoughts. We shift our thoughts on truth so that we can perceive the true image and not an image that is based on emotions or thoughts of echoes in our minds of things that are not true. We refocus our thoughts from thoughts of tradition and religion to truth, to what the God conscious is saying. It's like when you want to see an image and you look through binoculars, you have to adjust the binoculars until you can perceive the image without without it being blurred. The adjustment may take a couple of minutes or it may take longer, but you keep adjusting. For every new image, you have to refocus, and for every new level of God's consciousness, you have to refocus. So I urge you to do the work. Refocus as much as you need to. Refocus your thoughts. Think on things that are true. Think on things that are honest. Refocus so that you can perceive and go within and see the true God consciousness that God is taking you to. I will be coming from um, Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. My word is restart, and it's going to be the three L's to restart. Isaiah 14, 40, excuse me, Isaiah 43, 18 through 19. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. We were just told earlier about the definition of restart. It means to start again which means that when you have, in order to restart, you had to have started it before. Mm -hmm. In my life, I've had to restart on occasions. And notice I said occasions and not occasion. Because God allows you to restart as many times as you need to get you to the place where he already knew you would end up. God orchestrated some situations in my life to get me to look at my life, to listen to him, and learn from my past experiences. For example, when I resigned from my job after Micaiah was born, I had to refocus my goals. I had to allow the circumstances of my life to sit me down and refocus, as Dana said, and I had to restart. During that study, during my study of this word, three L's came to mind. Look, listen, and learn. Look for God in everything so that we're able to perceive the new thing that he is doing. For example, when I spoke earlier about losing my job, I had to look at unemployment as an opportunity to gain more time with God, during which time God rekindled my desire to complete my bachelor's degree. The scripture also says to forget the former things. We are not to allow the things of the past to be a barrier between us and the plan of God for our lives. I couldn't let the fact that I had taken time off from school and settled into working in day-to-day life. I had to listen for God's voice, for the guidance and direction. God is always talking, so we are to raise our vibrations so that we will be on the same frequency to hear from him. And I was able to do that in both mind and body. I finally learned I had to learn that because God knew that I needed my degree, not only in the workplace, but also to secure a sense of accomplishment in me, 
that I will be able to value myself. I had to learn from all those experiences. Our lives are planned out by the omniscient God. He knows everything so that as we walk or live in this life, we should pay attention to the types, shadows, and patterns that the Bible and our lives are lined with. They are to build us and not to kill us. Our life experiences are where God is able to make a way in the wilderness and the streams in the wasteland. God is calling us through this scripture to look to him, not at our circumstances, and to focus on our freedom in Christ and not our perceived slavery to world events. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Come on to keep praising him. It's offering time. It's offering time. It's offering time. Come on and give. Press down, shaking together, run it over. All right. Deacon Cersei. Amen. Amen. All right. Y'all done heard all the reads. Y'all done heard three reads so far. You finna hear the fourth one. We gonna receive. just a part of this, this service that everybody can, can have a part of. Everybody can, can, can give their offering. Uh, there's, there's a few ways to give, and that's, that's to give a buy. Uh, if you don't have cash, you can, you can, you can give at our, our Debbie room over here with, with Prophetess Jones. Uh, our, our cash out is dollar sign, capital A-L-E-C, E-N-T-E-R. Want to sow into our fabulous pastor? Her cash app is dollar sign. I live 1968. That's our four ways to give. Why you Why you preparing your offering? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna get some off my off my head while while y'all y'all preparing your offering. You can go ahead and stand. Y'all y'all might can help me. I, I heard a, I, I listened to a song this week. Just it just it just popped up. I was listening to, to, to Kurt Franklin radio in my office, and I was doing paperwork, and the only word that stood out to me was these words. The only thing, I don't know what the name of the song is or nothing, but all it said, I might can go off of that. All it said was, I love God. See if anybody knew the rest of it. All right. I love God. You don't love God? What's wrong with you? That's what it is. You got, I love God. You don't love God? What's wrong with you? One more time, y'all. We're going to go, I love God. You don't love God. What's wrong with you? All right. <laughs> All right, let's, let's, let's pray. <laughs> Everybody get that good off in here. Father, we thank you for your presence in this, in this program tonight, Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask that you, that you, those that are given, Heavenly Father, bring prosperity, bring abundance to their lives. Father, bring abundance and prosperity to the, to the ministry here in Antioch. Heavenly Father, that we use it for the build up of your kingdom. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.
with y'all. We're gonna have Miss Juanita and Miss Angela Cersei up again for a raffle. And then we will have a selection by the ABC, the F Praise City. I'm sorry, y'all for taking my mic, y'all. Antioch Life Enrichment Center, Praise City. <laughs> We're going to have our speakers, uh, Elder Johnny Pruitt, Prophetess Portia Lampkin, and Pastor Donna Prather. All right. Y'all ready?
how great is our God. Won't you sing with me? How great is our God. Is our God. 
to tell you there's nothing wrong with you. Amen. There's nothing wrong with you. Amen. You're just out of alignment. You just need to be realigned. Uh, my scripture of choice this evening tonight is Romans 7, 25. Okay. I thank God. This is Apostle Paul talking. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I serve the law of God but with the flesh the law of sin. This whole entire chapter, Romans 7, Apostle Paul was dealing with something you and I deal with on a regular basis that we have been dealing with all year long that brings us to this point right now where we give God the praise. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about the struggle within. Yes. The struggle we all have within. N knowing what to do but not able to do it. Doing that that I don't want to do. Yeah. Am I talking to anybody in here? Yeah. So he was letting us know that the struggle is real. Yeah. So he even prefaced this verse. Uh, that was 725, 724. He says, oh, wretched man, oh, wretched man. that I am. Yeah. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? He understood that in this body, in this flesh of ours, dwelleth no good thing. Yeah. So he wanted us to now, with my mind, I serve the law of God. So my, what I've come to encourage us with tonight is to get us to understand that we need to stop trying to serve God with our body, yeah. with our flesh, with that which is external, and begin to serve God with our minds and allow our minds to be realigned. Yes. So realign, what do you mean by the word realign? What is, re, what is realign? Change or restore to a different or former position? The former position that we once had, we came out of the mind of God. Yeah. We came perfect. We came complete. We have everything. But here, 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 here's the kicker. And this is what I like to relate, uh, kind of relate this word to is uh, alignment. Most of us have a vehicle. Have you ever driven before? And sometimes a vehicle gets what? Out of alignment. And you have to take it back to the shop to get it what? Realigned. And when it's out of alignment, what does it do? It pulls to one direction. Some of us are being pulled by what's on the inside of us. And all we have to do is need to be realigned. 
allow God to realign us. Now, what causes a car to get out of alignment? Potholes. <laughs> Bumps in the road. Accidents. And down through 2023, all of us have hit some pots in the road. Some potholes unexpectedly. Unexpectedly, you're driving all of a sudden, boom. And you're now your car begins to pull. Some of us doing life, living, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, hit a pothole. Yeah. Some of us, through our own volition, yeah. not only hit a pothole, but we create our own accidents. Yeah. But here is the beauty of everything, what I want us to get us to understand. So we're talking about realign, realignment. We're talking about being a real line in our mind. Knowing what God has and what God has said and what God thinks about us. 1 Corinthians 2.16 says, Who have known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct them? But we have the mind of Christ. Yeah. So if I have the mind of Christ dwelling in me, all I need to do now is be realigned. How do I do that? By positioning myself back in alignment with the will of God for my life. By studying his word. By using the keys of the kingdom. That's what brings me back into alignment. And understanding that nothing, listen to me clear now nothing nothing not no good thing dwelleth in this flesh right. that there is so I need to stop trying to serve God out of my flesh not only this body of mine but that sinful nature yeah. that we inherited from Adam and so with that being said, now how do I real my, realign my mind is, now I understand that because I have, he said, as long as we're in this body, those things are going to happen. Yeah. We have beat ourselves up. Others have beat ourselves up yeah. because we were walking out of alignment. And I come to encourage us tonight to let us know we no longer need to do that. Understand what God has said about us. Yeah. Listen, what, listen to some of the things that God has said about us. He has said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of peace and not evil to give you a hope and a promise and expect it in. And even when I with the writer, writer wrote for my thoughts, are not your thoughts my ways are not your ways he was not that was not an indictment it's just the fact that we were out of alignment those same thoughts that God has for us are the same ones that we should have for ourselves irregardless of what happened irregardless of what I'm doing irregardless of the potholes of life irregardless of the bumps in the road that I run over I need to get myself up get myself back in alignment and walk with my head up and not allow what the voices outside of me to condemn me. Even in this particular verse, this chapter, chapter 7, he, he wrote those two verses. If you read over to Romans 8 and 1, it says, now after he said all of that, there therefore is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not of the flesh but after the spirit. So once I allow my mind to be realigned, oh, of course, nobody is perfect in here. Yeah, if you've had some mishaps throughout the course of 2023, that's why you're in here tonight. And we're going to have some in 2024. But at, I will not allow those actions or behavior to determine who I am. My mind has now been realigned. And so when my mind becomes, so here's what happens. When you're out of alignment, Deacon Sergey, when you're out of alignment, guess what? Your car begins to pull one way. It begins to wear out your tires. Yeah. You have to work a little harder to keep it in the road. Yeah. So we working, we are working our foolish self to death to trying to live this thing called life. Yeah. Because we're out of alignment, now we make it hard for ourselves. We are, need to allow ourselves to be realigned. So don't allow. Don't allow the things that you're going through, the things that are happening to you, what focusing you, to cause you to stay out of alignment. 
allow yourself now to become back into alignment where now you can continue to move forward and progress and watch what God begins to do in your life. You want a better life in 2024? Be realigned in your mind. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. This is where it's at. He who controls your mind controls you. It's so good to see you in a, a Sister Fillmore, Auntie Lunk. Now, when she was coming up, they had an old saying that God is a heart fixer and a mind regulator. Yeah. Pastor Prater told her, fix your heart, fix your life. I'm saying, fix your, fix your mind, fix your life as well. Yeah. So allow God to regulate our heart and fix our mind and to bring us back into realignment. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you, yeah, things get tough. Things get difficult. That which is on the inside of us, that, that, that sinful nature is going to pull. Yes. It is going to pull, but as long as I stay before God and allow him to continue to keep me in alignment with him, I will not fall prey to those things. And even if I do, in his Romans 6 chapter, the chapter even before that, he talks about sin no longer has dominion over you. Let not sin reign in your mortal bodies. Don't allow it to happen. We have control over it. Allow ourselves to be renewed in our mind to become into a realignment with God. And no matter what, you, what you're seeing, what you are, even those that you are involved in things right now, I don't care how messy it is. Yeah. There's nobody like our God. God still loves you just the same. He loves you just the same as he loves anybody else. He is no respecter of persons. So now I'll get your mind together. Allow your mind to be re, 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 realigned. Align it with the thoughts that God has towards you. And this is what, <laughs> this is what, he ended up saying in Isaiah, Isaiah 55 and 7, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Yes. You're free. free. You've been made free. God is not mad at you. God is not trying to get you. Don't allow yourself to be condemned. Allow God now to just realign you. you for I am. Say this to yourself. Say this to yourself. This is some of the thoughts that God thinks towards you. Say this to yourself. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah. And my soul knoweth right well. When I realign my line, mind to be realigned, I begin to think, of those, think on those things. And I come out of those places that I am. I stop doing those things that I do, I'm doing. Because a lot of times we try to fix behavior without fixing the mind. You can't fix behavior without fixing the mind. Realign. Allow God. Allow him. Don't push. Allow him now. As we enter into 2024 to realign us, stop trying to dress up this on the outside. Okay, New Year's Day is coming, Sunday's first Sunday, uh, first Sunday of the month, year is coming. I got to go to church. That's outside dressing. You can still come to church and still be caught up in that same stuff. Stop checking the box. Start working on this. You get that mind right. That body will get right. That life will get right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Realign. Amen. My word is rebrand. Coming from Genesis 1 and 26, it said, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, over the live flock, livestock, and all the wild animals, and over all creatures that move along the ground. Um, when you look at the word rebrand, you think of image. Yeah. 
like. Um, if, I, if I put an image up of uh, um, Nike, one thing that, that stood out to me is with Apple and with Nike and with Adidas and with Starbucks uh, and Jordans, uh, is they was known for their image, for they was known for their name. Yeah. They was known for the image before they was known for their name. So what is about about being rebrand? It means I have to change the image of. Um, and for re, it means again because um, once I was released out of the mind of God from a conduit from eternity and to time, I was made from here in Genesis in his image and in his likeness. But over a period of time, I had stuff that I encountered that changed my image. I didn't look like the father. I look like mama. I didn't look like the father. I look like what happened to me. And over that course of period of time, I got farther and farther and farther away from the, from the image of Christ. But the night is the night that I get in position and do it all over again. Somebody say, do it all over again. That's what re means. I do it all over again. And I find myself going backwards and realizing that I am created in his image. And once I become created in his image, it's like I'm looking face to face at God and when you see me you see the father so the image is a representation of an external form of a person or a thing in the part so so foremost my branding is my identity yeah. and we have look and use and let everything else gave us an identity when I would remember when I was in God he told me who I was he told me I was fifthly and one fifthly made he told me that I was a I am. He told me that I can do her and I can be her and I can accomplish her, but I forgot the brand. I forgot the image because so much and so much has, has, has gave me an image that I lost it. So that's why I got to read. I got to do it again. I got to find my image. I got to find my likeness. And once I find my image and my likeness on down in this verse, it says, once I realize who I am, my image and my likeness again, then I can have dominion and power over everything. Every, every thought, I cast it down. Every imagination, I cast it down. What, what once gave me an image can't give me an image no more. Because once I see myself face the face, my image start coming back. As I clean up my soul, my image and my likeness start coming back. Once I do away with the echoes and everything, my environment and TV and the internet, once I move that stuff out the way, then I can see myself as he see me. Look at somebody say, rebrand yourself, rebrand yourself, rebrand yourself. All right, my word is reboot. When I think about the word reboot, amen, I think about uh, uh, what watch night service is really about and what the uh, 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 proclamation, emancipation proclamation is about. During the uh, slavery times, uh, uh, the slaves used to, uh, uh, before midnight, began to pray, uh, praise and worship God, sing hymns to God, asking God, requesting of God of their freedom. And then they'll wait until the president read off this day declaration to see if they were going to be free. And my brothers and sisters, I stand here to, de to declare to you today that we are free from master. But what happened with master still uh, 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 to replay on our mind and it's time for us to let it go. It's time for us to release it. We're no longer enslaved and we can do and have everything we want to do and have. But the problem is when your mind has been shut down and locked down on you, you feel like you can't go any further. Why? Because we cannot live outside of our thinking. We're not free. And then the church don't allow us to tell what's really going on with us. Why? We dress up the outside and we have an outside image. And Lord, if you have money, if you have houses and cars, you have the position. But this thing in God is not worried about anything tangible that you have. It says you're going to return to God by way of your heart. So you reboot and although we're not being told what to do, we're not enslaved, we're not shackled down, but our minds have been shackled. Our minds are in chains. Our, why? Because we cannot think 
outside of what we think. So reboot means to start up again after shutting down. It means to start anew, refresh by creating a new version of yourself. My God, Hebrews chapter 9 and, and, and chapter 10 helps us understand how to be transformed by the renewing of our mind from one version, meaning one covenant, to another version and another covenant. That's the way we grow and that's the way we develop. My scripture tonight is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, and it reads, Therefore, therefore mean as a result of, therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. We have been taught that we got to die and we got to leave here before to see God to be a new. I've been told if I could walk this straight line, keep up the rules in life that, that was given to us through uh, 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 religion and through the pastor that I was going to be all right when it comes to God. But I'm finding out as I read the Bible that God is expecting me to change right now. He's expecting me to change. Why? Because he is requiring a living sacrifice. Meaning our life, meaning I don't have to wait until I die. Transition, meaning breath leave this body to see him, but we have the opportunity to do so now. So this scripture here, being within Christ, means being, uh, being in Christ is our awareness of the voice of God within us as uh, or our spiritual intuition of God, the divine mind, through the quickening power of the word of truth. Because religion have kept us tied in to scripture. It does not allow us to hear the voice, but the Bible keeps pointing to the fact that we have a, a, the living word that dwells on the inside of us and we have the opportunity to get to it and it's gonna cause a reboot what is a reboot I'm gonna have to shut everything down that I thought I knew I'm gonna have to shut everything down my experiences that told me who I was I'm gonna have to shut everything down that mama and daddy and uncle said that I was I am gonna have to shut everything down that's going on in society what are you trying to say Donna everybody in influencing you but your own voice. Yeah. Everybody got to say so. And there we go running. We run after trying to find. And the truth of the matter is I understand what you're doing because you are trying to find yourself. Yeah. Unconsciously knowing that there's more. My God. And so if we have this word of truth on the inside of us that has been covered up by the lie that says we'll never be nothing. It's that says that uh, because I was raped and molested, I'm damaged goods. That says because I was born and raised in the projects that I'm damaged good because I come up and you either got to be Baptist, you either got to be uh, uh, Pentecostal, you you got to be uh, 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 your name by uh, these denominations that has nothing to do with God. Christ is the only begotten Son of God, or the one complete idea of man in divine mind, the mind of God. God expresses himself through ideas and thoughts, and it is through the ideas and through thoughts that we know God, that we perceive God. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And so God is mine. They don't like for you to say this. God is energy. God, God is the voice. It's the dreams that you see when you're asleep. It's those things that you see that you're scared to go tell somebody. Why? Because they saw you doing something that counteracted what you're seeing when and while you're sleeping, while you're dreaming. But it's time for you to wake up out your sleep, old sleepy head. Yeah. 
And Pruitt has already took my scripture when he said Romans chapter 7, because here's the thing. We were told that coming here to this church, that and, and you began to usher, sing, you preach, you play instruments, you, you work in whatever department that you're in, that you are serving God. But Romans chapter 7, verse 25 says, we serve God in our mind, and you're coming here to the place of worship. Why? To, to, uh, 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 to hear the preached word, what an evangelist thought and said, to hear the preached word, the sword, so that you can use it to cut the extra fat off your heart. What do you mean? When, when Adam, when God put Adam to sleep, God did not wake Adam back up. And that is the reason why Adam ate from the, uh, uh, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And it caused him to lose perception and awareness of who he was spiritually, intentionally. And then he sent him out to go and live and do business as a human being. And so the Bible declares that when Adam fell, all mankind fell. And for that reason, we sinned, meaning what? We were born into something, and you couldn't stop it if you wanted to. Yeah. But oh my God. When God sent his son, he's allowing us to wake back up to the spirit man. And what we don't want to do is to give up what we know and give up what we are so used to. Why? Because they told me if I come in here and I go to church and I serve on a, on a board and I have all kind of titles, I'm serving God. But I stand here to tell you today that you're only serving God in your mind. You're coming here serving up under my leadership while you supposed to be growing and developing. But where's the growth and the development? Where's the love? Where's the peace? Where's the joy? Where's the hope? Where's the meekness? Where's the fruit of the Spirit locked up on the inside of us because we choose not to reboot? We don't want to shut it down. We want to keep it going, make like it, act like it, pretend and look like it. And the whole while you have this spirit uh, that dwells on the inside of you, this Christ consciousness that's waiting for your arrival to shut down one level of consciousness, to enter into another level of consciousness. And I'm telling you, that requires a fight. That requires a battle of your mind. And here at Antioch Life Enrichment Center, we give you the opportunity to fail as many times as you need to fail. Because if you ever learn from the, your, your falling, then that means you didn't fail, but you had an experience that caused you to change your consciousness and to see yourself in a different light. Come on here, somebody. Say amen. amen. So, God, we serve God in our mind. So, if you are in Christ, meaning our uh, reference here, Christ is the word. It's John, and it, it declares it in John 1 and 1. So Christ is the word. You are a new, if you are in the word, you the living word that dwells on the inside of you, you are a new creature, meaning you have been redeemed, you have been renewed, you have been, re been redeveloped, or you're growing into a new version of yourself. That's the reason why you are growing. God came and he says, I sent my son not to condemn the world, but through him the world might be saved. But we get it confused. Why? Because Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11 tells us that God, Solomon says, God set the world in man's heart and man don't even know it because you're too busy looking at the world as you know it, seeing, error, thinking through your two eyes and not with the heart that he gave you. Yeah. I just dropped some knowledge on y'all in this place. And I, I encourage you to question me on what I said. I said, Solomon said in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 that God set the world and man heart and man don't even know it. You ain't shutting it down. God ain't no, no itty bitty, teeny weeny God that we have portrayed him to be. He placed something on the inside of us that caused us to bring into this three-dimensional world something that this world have not even seen yet. Yeah, yeah. But oh my God, it's happening. Yeah. 
to those that are adhering to the fact that they have more. Those that are giving up what they know for what they know. Yeah, yeah. Then he says, old things are passed away. Meaning those false beliefs of ourselves that's deeply rooted in our mind. The inner acceptance of an idea or thought as true. From religion, from environment, from society, from experiences and family. This is the reason why we reboot. This is the reason why we create a new version of ourselves because we have built a house for God with our hands. Come on here somebody. And that's in Hebrews chapter 9 and, and, and which is man hands meaning our ideas, our thoughts that was passed down from our cardinality has built this house that is built on sinking sand. Every time something happens, it falls. Every time the wind blows, it crumbles. Every time the water rises, it crumbles. Why? Because we don't know that our foundation is not built on something sure, which is the Christ consciousness that's on the inside of us. Yeah. Hmm. But God's house is built in the eternal heavens where God resides in consciousness with his thoughts and his ideas. You mean to tell me, Donna, that this thing was never about my ticket to heaven or hell? If you will go back and read the scriptures, you will see that it's not saying that. You will see what was added in there to make it sound good. You will see the extra that you need to cut off, the extra ideas, the extra knowledge, the extra thoughts, what they told you. Because it's getting ready to be a light show. God is about to visit his people like never before. His spirit it's about to be pouring out on us. That's if you allow it to happen on the inside of you. If you'll take yourself off the throne and let Christ be your master, you'll see something different in your life. Yeah. See, we keep looking for it outside of us. He says, behold, if you in Christ, you knew. No. And then the old things are passed away, the false beliefs. And then he says, behold, after the pass away, mean look, perceive, all things are become new. You and I develop into our original, unique individual selves and thoughts. Religion has grouped us together and said, we're going to all dress like this. We're going to all wear our hair like this. We're going to all look like this from my out. But that right there does not fix my heart. That's the reason why the hearts of men are failing them, because it is unaware that Christ did dwells on the inside of us. We have been grafted into God's family, the spiritual family, through Christ, through the word, by faith, what God says in him as savior, as rescuer, as redeemer, as deliverer. And this is my final say, John verses four, chapter 14, verse 6. This is amplified. Jesus said, I am, said to him, I am the only way to God and the real truth and the spirit of life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So spirit life is that, that, that living word that dwells on the inside of us. It lives. The, temp, the Bible says this, and nobody ever touches it, that we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. What does that mean? God dwelling place in us. His, he has always been now. He's just been lying dormant because we have followed after the lie. But if you reboot, if you shut this thing down and says this thing have a virus, this thing right here is has uh, something has infiltrated my mind that I need to re shut this thing down and bring up a new operating system in life. And stop thinking of coming to church as a you grudging coming to church because you don't understand what should be going on. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what I said. Right. Church, ministry, you are the church. Yeah. Ministry is for you. Yeah. It's for the, your development and your growth into the spiritual house that you are. Yeah. And, but if you don't ever shut you down, you're going to be like a dog chasing his tail the rest of your life. Hey, man. Hey, man. Yeah. I didn't mean to swear. So, we said all these words. 
We said all these words. I'll give you paper back. Ken, you got whole notes over here. We, we intentionally, this, pro, this watch night service was put on by as, with Zan Harder as the leader and the team. And we intentionally said words like reset, refocus, restart. Thank you. Why? Because it ain't over. What I learned when we went through all those deaths in my family, I started paying attention. And, 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 and it is a certain thing that we're going to die. But I start asking the question why I live. I was, I was just not sitting here to go through hell with gasoline drawers on. I was sitting here to bring a kingdom that cannot be seen. It's on the inside of me to bring it forth into this three-dimensional world. And my question to you is, what are you going to do about that world that God has placed in your heart? That's the reason why. That's the reason why I love coming here, because you get the chance. No condemnation, no judgment. I, they, say I, they say I put my foot on folks, Nick, but I'm telling you, I believe in having real conversations. I, I, not, without, not judging, but we got to get to, if, if, if you don't start in a real place as to really what's going on with you in your mind, you're going to always receive fake news. You're going to be fighting fake wars. But if you begin to attack uh, this thing, your mind, paying close attention to what you think, because the scripture says, if I'm in Christ, Christ is the word. That means I have some words on the inside of me, and I have to question myself, who words am I using to build this house? So I stand here tonight as, as we close uh, 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 this year out. And don't make no New Year's resolution. Just uh, fashion in your heart, you'll develop and change. But that's the reason why you can't go no further in life. It's the way you think. Words is power. And you either operating in fear or you're operating in faith. So I'm going to ask y'all to stand tonight. And I'm going to do this right here before we close this year. Because if you have not accepted Christ as Savior and Lord over your life, then you're subject to your environment, your religion, what religion told you. You're subject to society. You're subject to your natural family. And you're subject to your experiences. They give you the voice. They tell you what to do. They wake you up at night. They have you run around here acting like you have lost your mind because the truth of the matter is you have you have lost the mind that God gave you and he's saying I need you to find that and then we're going to be able to grow the seed because the word is in seed form in us those that haven't started the growth process and if you have not accepted him as Lord and Savior, everybody close their eyes, nobody look around with me. This thing is personal. You don't have to prove this to nobody. You don't have to prove nothing to nobody. See, this is our problem. We run around here want people to validate us, and God has already done so. He has placed that on the inside of you and said, that right there, our day, I set you aside for my use. And now it's time for you to return back to me. Salvation is about your return. It means your return to your birthright as to who you are spiritually. The promises of God are yea and amen in Christ. Mm -hmm. So if you have not accepted him as Lord and Savior, raise your hand and put it back down real quick. raise their hand, but I'm going to pray anyways, because if you are in Christ, where is the fruit of the Spirit of God? That's the second question. 
Y'all can look up now. Nobody raised their hand. Where's your fruit then? Hmm? Where is your joy, your love? I ain't talking about no, no car. If you got a job and got good credit, you can walk on and you can go get that. But it takes the son that dwells on the inside of you to get to the father. He's the way. You can't go any other way. It's a lie. So, most gracious Heavenly Father, these people that are under the sound of my voice, thank you, God, that you do everything that you do. That they don't rest. That they don't sleep well. That everything that they do, you do to bring them into your kingdom.
2024 is the year of open doors. But if you have not prepared your soul to perceive the God that dwells on the inside of you, the door will be open and you won't even know it. When you start perceiving yourself in a different light,
alignment with the Holy Spirit that dwells on the inside of you so you can take this world by force. Don't be the one that stand there and point at what's going on with everybody else. That means you're living out of your natural sight. But I promise you, the world that cannot be seen with their natural eyes is a way 